let's continue this on now into video number two. There's only two types of photographers. I've talked about someone who makes pictures as opposed to someone who simply sees with their eyes and therefore they take pictures. We have a reactive photographer and we have a proactive photographer. A reactive photographer is no different than an animal. You kick a dog in the butt, it's going to turn around and bite you, right? Okay, a proactive photographer, someone that actually thinks and composes in their brain, but then they know they have the skills to take the brain that's between their two ears, the camera that's between their two ears, excuse me, and translate that into the camera between their two hands. And really, that is what defines professional photography. I've said a professional photographer is someone who's an expert in composition and light manipulation, but the true ultimate definition of a photographer is someone who's able to make the camera in their head match the camera in their hands. Never the inverse, you know. You don't, you're not a slave to the camera. If you're a slave to the camera, you're not a professional photographer. So you have a reactive photographer, someone who takes pictures, and, and someone who makes pictures, which is a proactive photographer who knows how to control the light, who knows what negative fill is, who knows how to manipulate awful raw lighting. And Mother Nature is uh, a bitch and she usually does not provide very good lighting. If you're in a studio, you have complete and total control. You've got diffusion panels, reflectors, you know, uh, soft fill cards, uh, gels. You could do whatever you want. I mean, that's where a lot of lazy photographers, and well, I mean, that, I'm a lazy photographer. <laughs> that's where the, the magic happens where you have complete and total control. But if you're outside, and I'm not talking about street photography or, you know, taking landscape photography. You can't change the lighting there, well you certainly can in Lightroom and Photoshop, but how to actually use that raw lighting, use the dynamic range of your camera, use the correct exposure, bracketing to be able to give definition either to the speculars or to the shadow, what is it that you want to expose for? As when it comes to the subject and taking raw light, do you know what negative fill is? Why does nobody talk about negative fill? We think of uh, white reflectors, we think of uh, translucent panels and we think of silver reflectors and gold reflectors. Well, what about negative fill? You see the difference between this and this? Negative fill. Why does nobody talk about negative fill? You know if you buy a fancy foldable uh, disc reflector, do you know why there's a black side to that? Usually there are four uh, different ones. They got uh, silver and gold and translucent and there's a black. That black is for negative fill. It's also for a couple of other things, uh, one to block light, but basically it's there for negative fill. How do you manipulate the raw light to make it do what you want? Does layering light, especially outdoors, does it have to be anything other than sunlight or one speed light? No, it certainly doesn't. In the case of the sun here, if I use a diffusion panel with a model outside and I give a uh, definition a lowering of the speculars and a higher gradation between my diffuse and my midtones, my, excuse me, my, uh, my midtones or my diffuse and my speculars, then I've actually changed the composition. I've given it beauty and definition, especially when it comes to a person or a model shoot or a headshot. But what about the shadows? What do I use for fill? Where do I place them? If I have all my light coming through this panel, whether it be a soft box or sunlight outdoors, Layering light does not mean that you have to have four studio strobes or four speed lights outdoors. It means being able to create different light sources, either adding, subtracting, and placement. You either add it, you subtract it with negative fill, for example, or you place it in the correct location to give definition as you deem fit, such that the contrast ratios between your shadows your midtones, your diffuse, and your speculars is where your brain, the camera in your brain, wants it to be. This is really, really soft lighting. What I'm doing is I'm using actual ambient light, my raw light that's actually spilling over, or I can use the diffuse light that's coming through a soft box, for example, or through the diffuser, off of this white panel and spilling back. I still have contrast definition, but I've actually increased the zone or the expanse between uh, the uh, uh, the uh, transition between my shadows and my uh, diffuse and midtones and between my speculars and my midtones. Okay, what if I want a harder transition, harder edge transition? What if I actually want to give it harder contrast character yet still maintain that beauty? Okay, using a silver panel reflector here. Where do you place these? Experiment. You know, you're going to fail. 
But you're not going to fail for long. You're going to fail for a day or two at most. Depends on how much you do in a day. You need to be a proactive photographer. I said the only thing that really defines you as a professional photographer is your ability to make the camera in your brain be the master of the camera in your hands. Not the other way around, like, ah, oh, crap, the lighting sucks, my picture sucks. <clears throat> this is my quote. There's no bad lighting. There's only bad photographers. You take the lemons, the light that you're given, if you can't add it, like in a wedding chapel, and you make lemonade. You know what to do with it. Okay? You know have to know what to do with it. You have to know what to expose for. If you can't manipulate the lighting, what is it that you need to manipulate to make the composition as closely match what it is? Sometimes you're absolutely screwed. You can't add lighting, the lighting sucks. Well, you can do a lot of things in Photoshop and Lightroom. But what is it that you need to do? If you have complete control after the reception in a wedding or in... You know, when it comes to portrait photography and headshots, you have complete and control of control. And also, you want to uh, remove wrinkles, not add wrinkles. You want to uh, accentuate the positive and eliminate the negative. Obviously so, unless you uh, don't like the person, you want to make them look ugly. <laughs> Hard light, soft light, what is appropriate? Take a picture of a dog, a baby, a beautiful woman, an old woman. What is it that you're doing? You need to understand how to control the diffuse values of the true tonality, i.e. the skin tone, or what something is in essence. Meaning the human eyes. Our human eyes adjust to any lighting nearly immediately. Our human eyes always are seeing, unless it's in total darkness or even in super bright sunlight, we're seeing it. We're seeing the true tonality or the diffuse value of what someone or what something is. But cameras don't work that way. Your cameras cannot see, they don't even know. But they can't see the true diffuse value, the true tonality of what something is. Right here is my midtones, my diffuse value, my speculars over here, my shadows over here. Let's really show you the shadows now. You can see the shadows. Now I have a harder contrast, a narrower zone between my speculars and my midtones. It is about control. Control and manipulation, making compositions match immediately without forethought and cogitation. Oh my God, where do I put that? You'll know immediately whether you're going to use a white reflector. You'll know immediately if you're going to use a silver reflector. What is it that I want to do to give this uh, object definition as I want? This, as opposed to that. You are going to have to see in your subject where the speculars are, where the shadows are, where the diffuse and midtones are and control the edge transitions between the shadows and the midtones, between the specular and the midtones. Control the ratios. Controlling the ratios. The ratios between my shadows and my speculars. Well, how do I do that? I'm outside. Oh my god, I got some harsh lighting. You know, I'm out in the bright sun. Let me turn on this light. I'll show you an example. I'm in the bright sun. I got a beautiful model. She looks like crap. I've got a huge dynamic range between my shadows and my specular. There's just enormous contrast right there. Well, I'm going to add a diffusion panel. Okay, that's better, but uh, now I have better dynamic range to work. Well, what am I going to do now? Well, you're doing a paid-for shoot. They expect you to know what the hell you're doing and where the hell to place stuff. So that you... Oh, my God, there we go. Holy crap. That works. She's beautiful. Yes. Now you set your depth of field, the correct exposure, you have the dynamic range set. You are controlling the values between the specular, the diffuse, and the shadow of your subject. You are not a slave to crap lighting. There's no bad lighting, there's only bad photographers. Ah! Get that through your thick skull. Get it, got it, good. Hasta la vega.